Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining this Great Tech webinar. In this session, we're going to be taking a look at what's new in Advanced Workshops deal for 2025. My name is Tommy Moussis. I'm a technical solution architect uh, with over 10 years of experience in teaching and implementing uh, software and hardware solutions uh, for the AEC industry. In this session, we're going to be mainly taking a look at what's new uh, in Advanced Workshop for 2025. Uh, but before we do that, we're going to have a quick introduction to Advanced Workshop Steel, considering it's a relatively new product in the Gray Tech Fabricate portfolio. And then towards the end of the session, we're just going to be taking a look at uh, how or where you can find more information on Gray Tech Advanced Workshop. So let's take a quick look at uh, Gray Tech Advanced Workshop Steel. In short, Advanced Workshop is uh, an MIS. It's a management information system. It is a multi-architecture solution, so you, which means you can have multiple company profiles, multiple factories, and warehouses linking to a single database. Uh, we can manage multiple units, languages, and currencies within the platform. And uh, it's really meant to manage all actions within a steel fabrication business. So when looking at supply chain management, we can manage the sales process, uh, uh, creating quotes, uh, credit control, invoicing, uh, job sites, uh, managing uh, extras attributed to projects, change orders, et cetera. In the technical office, uh, the key uh, variable here is a BIM integration, so we can import metadata from CAD solutions such, such as Autodesk Advanced Steel. And we can even uh, have real-time monitoring and traceability in the workshop. Uh, this is uh, with the addition of uh, hardware. Uh, so we have applications that sit on top of uh, PDAs and uh, tablets, and we can really track all actions at each workstation and in the uh, shipping department. And uh, for stock management as well, we can integrate barcodes to track uh, your stock levels. For technology integration, of course, we can import data from Autodesk solutions as well as uh, Great Tech solutions, and uh, we are using SQL uh, for our database. And uh, with integration, we can uh, essentially create interfaces uh, for any uh, accounting solution on the market. It really just depends on what you want, but uh, for, for reference and integrations that we've done in passing, we've created interface to export data to platforms like, uh, or software solutions like Sage, SAP, Oracle, Microsoft Dynamics, et cetera. So regarding data structure and advanced workshop, uh, in, in short, you would start by creating uh, your customer profiles. Uh, so we do have a, a CRM portion of the software, if you will, where you can create your customer profiles and input all the data, main contacts, um, addresses, uh, uh, credit information, et cetera. Uh, to the company, and then you would then go on to create your job site, where then you can link multiple quotes or customer orders to a single job site. Uh, we can also import uh, uh, the, the BIM files uh, from uh, CAD solutions like Autodesk Advanced Steel, and then we can manage uh, the structural elements within our platform. What I mean by managing structural elements is that we can, uh, of course, import uh, that data from a uh, CAD system and then after manage the bill of material to see uh, what materials we have in stock, raw materials uh, we have in stock to manage the, uh, the assemblies. We can then attribute uh, operations to each assembly to uh, then see the, the theoretical time it will take to, to actually fabricate said assembly and a theoretical cost as well by attributing uh, times and costs per operation. Uh, from there, we can then uh, segregate the project in uh, by, by phases uh, or by lots into fabrication orders uh, for production. We even have uh, the ability to export data uh, or drive data to the shop. We can export NC files or DSTV data uh, that that is conformed to uh, the the machine specific needs. Uh, 
So once again, here to manage the elements, of course, uh, you will need to verify if you have the raw material in stock to produce the assemblies. If not, then we have a, a nesting module where then you'd be able to uh, uh, verify how many bars are required for the entirety of the fabrication order uh, or plates for the entirety of the fabrication order and then procure the material. Uh, in the latest release in 2025, you can actually uh, manage this on multiple fabrication orders at the same time, meaning you can uh, nest uh, each individual fabrication order, but then after group them all together for one single purchase. And in addition, we can once again drive uh, NC data to, to the shop and have these linked to uh, touch boxes, and we can even create delivery notes. So. Here, advanced. Uh, why we call it an MIS or a management information system is because it 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 actually manages uh, quite a few different uh, parts of your business. It's not just an ERP. We do have MRP functionality and even MES functionality, uh, uh, <clears throat> manufacturing execution system functionality uh, that is truly tailored tailored for steel fabrication businesses. In short, this will enable you to have full control of your production by either manual or automated methods. So it is not necessary to implement uh, PDAs and uh, and uh, tablets in your in your workshop. Everything can be managed within the platform itself, uh, but it will nonetheless give you control of production and help you with scheduling and planning and and uh, and tasks of this type. Uh, we give you a theoretical uh, time. Uh, uh, times uh, for, for your projects and workload calculations can manage your stock inventory. Uh, it'll be much easier than afterwards to have a post-production analysis or post-modem on your project to see how much time was uh, truly spent versus the uh, the uh, what was forecasted in the, in the estimation process. Uh, once again, it'll help you with production planning. And we do have a link with Autodesk Advanced Steel, uh, which will facilitate cons uh, uh, compiling information into uh, customer orders. So now looking at the key business, uh, business benefits, we provide a solution that will help you uh, receive information from CAD solutions such as Autodesk Advanced Steel. Uh, we help keep track of all actions throughout the entirety of the project uh, within one single platform, and we help businesses ensure on-time delivery of their products. Now let's take a look at what's new in 2025. So there's many features that have been added in this 2025 release, as you can see here. Uh, for more information regarding what's new in 2025, we encourage you to download our uh, user guide uh, for what's new in 2025. Uh, or what's new guide for 2025, I should say. Uh, but in this session, we're to take a look at five of the key features that have been added. In some of these, uh, uh, in some of these videos, I'll be able to highlight some uh, some of the other new features that that we've listed here. But we'll go through five of the main uh, features once again. So here we're to be taking a look at adding steel plates manually. So now in this uh, 2025 release, you're going to be able to detail plates directly in uh, quotes and or customer orders. So the benefit here, especially if you're a service center, uh, you're going to be able to uh, to to, uh, to use our CAD editor to uh, edit any uh, any plates that have been imported into a customer order. But you're also going to be able to detail plates directly into our platform without needing to import any data whatsoever. So this is a nice solution to, once again to make quick modifications uh, to, to files that have been uh, received, NC files that have been received to your business. And if you need to bypass the design department for, for whatever reason, let's say if, uh, if an assembly is already on the shop floor and you want to make a quick change or add a plate to the customer order, this is a nice tool uh, for that. Of course, if there's any major changes that were cha uh, that were uh, a any major change orders that were done to a steel project, you want to go by the design department because it can impact uh, the, the part marks and the quantity counts for, for components, etc. cetera. Uh, but for quick uh, additions like shim plates and things of that type to a project, it's, uh, it's really a nice tool to uh, facilitate adding those uh, sorts of additional uh, elements. So once again, the benefit is that you're going to be able to detail plates directly into our platform without needing to import data 
from uh, solutions like Autodesk Advanced Steel. And uh, the interface is using the same interface as uh, as we've previously introduced with our uh, uh, our detailing solution. So historically, you were only able to detail beams. And now, using the same dialog, you're to be able to detail uh, plates as well. So here, we're going to go ahead and create a customer order. We already have one created here. I'm just going to go to the items tab and then import a GTCX, a GTCX file, excuse me. Once selected and imported, I'll just go ahead and select one, uh, one component, one plate to import. Now from here, once an item is imported, we can uh, edit it with the uh, with the cat editor or the steel editor. In addition, if I wanted to add an additional plate, I could just use add steel parts manually. And now here you'll notice two new uh, two tabs, one for profiles and one for plates. And here, if you would like uh, to, uh, you could select your topology. Uh, so we have a few different shapes here to select from. But just be mindful that once you've applied your plate, you can continue. You can uh, further edit your plate in our CAD editor solution. So here, once the plate is selected, you would then apply your part mark information. So, uh, of course, the assembly mark and attached part mark. You would define the role of the item and then select the item code uh, for material consumption. And then here you would select your material grade, coding, and quantity count. Depending on the uh, topology selected, it, it will then activate uh, the, the cells necessary to modify the dimensions. Now here for this example, I'll se select a, a slightly more complex shape. Add in the assembly and part mark references, change the role of the item, and select another item code. Now here I'll just define the dimensions for the outer contour of the plate, and you'll notice in the bottom right-hand corner that now we have a preview that'll uh, display the modifications made as I edit. So here we can see that it's modifying in real time. And now we'll also notice that in the um, upper right hand corner, we'll see the operations applied. Uh, for he here, we can also view uh, the log file for the assignment tree. So if ever you're trying to apply uh, an operation that is not allowable in your shop. Of course, we can uh, we can configure it to subcontract uh, the the part component automatically. But in the log file, you'll be able to see in the upfront which workstations are going to manage uh, these components. So now, if required, I can go back and edit. Uh, steel components as well. So this is the item that we've imported. Historically, uh, from an item that was imported, you weren't able to uh, edit the, the plates, but now in this new release, you are able to go and, and make modifications. So here in this case, I've, I've deleted the holes. And if I if I would like, I can go ahead and add in additional, additional holes and change the locations of those items. Here I'll just define the distance, and then here I can select uh, <clears throat> the origin uh, of the dimensions in X and Y. So here I'm going to use a corner point uh, bottom left uh, hand reference, and now I'm just going to adjust the parameters accordingly.
But since then, I can validate and then save the changes. Next, we'll be taking a look at subcontracting. So what's new in subcontracting is that now we can uh, we can subcontract not only the entirety of the component, but individual operations and uh, codings as well. So now, once again, in this uh, new release, we can subcontract operations. Historically, we were only able to subcontract uh, the the uh, entirety of the assembly, or if it was a standalone part, the individual component. Now you can subcontract uh, uh, specific operations related to items. Uh, in addition to that, we can edit the production assignment tree to automatically uh, subcontract certain types of operations, uh, whether it be two plates or, or bar elements, or whether it be just a simple operation like uh, drilling, every time there's a hole that needs to be cut on a plate, we can subcontract it automatically. Uh, and the benefit, of course, is that now you don't have to uh, go in and edit this uh, this information through the um, supplier order menu, uh, and you can and you can uh, truly just sub subcontract manually through throughout the entire process or automatically upon upon import and then manually throughout the other steps. Let's take a look. So here once again, I'm going to start by importing data into a customer order. I'll go here to the items tab and click on 3D steel import. Once I select my file and click on open. Here now I'll point out that here we can also import by phase. Uh, so now this is a standard with uh, with the uh, import UI. If there's a phase applied to your model, you would automatically uh, see the phase. And then uh, from here, we'll notice that certain parts uh, are in yellow uh, versus green, meaning there's a part component that needs to be subcontracted uh, uh, due to the fact that it has a specific operation that we've already predefined to be subcontracted every time. In this case, the drilling of the holes for the plates. So here, if I process my root requirement analysis, I'll see here that uh, drilling uh, needs to be subcontracted for this uh, for for the for the bar element. Excuse me. And now, if I click on follow up to view the status, I'll notice here that uh, it has changed the status of the element, and I can see that it needs to be subcontracted. So here, I'll go ahead and create my fabrication order. And we'll see here that we have the uh, two fabrication orders listed there with the assemblies that we've just loaded. So from here, knowing that uh, these uh, items need to be subcontracted, I can validate the fabrication order. And here I'm just going to highlight that if I uh, wanted to uh, manually check the status, okay, this is the menu where you typically would uh, manually update your fabrication order to suggest that all uh, has been fabricated. Uh, the items will not be visible. This is due to the fact that now uh, they have been subcontracted. Uh, consequently, we'll use the launch, uh, launching on customer order uh, menu to view the items and to check the status. So here we'll see uh, the items from the fabrication order that are to be subcontracted. Now from here, we'll go to our supplier orders menu. I'll select the supplier. And then from here, you can select a warehouse, and then we'll save the supplier order before selecting operations. So once you select operations, uh, you're gonna be, uh, when clicking on uh, on fabrication orders, it's gonna show you the, oper uh, the items that have operations to be subcontracted uh, in this menu. 
If you wanted to, you can also consolidate multiple uh, items from other fabrication orders uh, to be subcontracted at the same time. Meaning if you had multiple projects going on at the same time and many items in each fabrication order need to be subcontracted, you could select the entire list and consolidate them all within one uh, single supplier order. Now, in theory, of course, uh, this would take a few days to complete, but here we're just going to suggest that now uh, these items have been completed and we're going to go ahead and um, and balance the, uh, the supplier order. Once I validate, and it is balanced, I can then return to the manufacturing production planning menu. Here we're going to update the menu to see the changes made. And now if I were to right click and go into manual checking, we will then see the items received. So here we could uh, select them, update the order to suggest that it's been completed. But first, before doing that, we should validate that uh, the items uh, have been received from subcontracting. Once that's done, now I can truly manually check the status to say they have been received, and we can suggest that production is complete. Now we'll see the status. That is partially produced, uh, mainly due to the fact that there was galvanization required on the items, so we would have had to sub them out for galvanization. Uh, moving on to the next subject in what's new for 2025, we'll take a look at the galvanization and coding management uh, enhancements that have been made. So now in this latest release, we are able to uh, factor in the costs uh, for uh, coding and uh, galvanization uh, automatically upon import. What this means is uh, based off the uh, surface area of the assemblies, we're able to calculate the cost for paint. And uh, based off a of weight of assemblies, we're able to calculate the cost of galvanization. Of course, you would have to predefine uh, these costs within the item codes themselves. Uh, but now upon import uh, for, for quotes and for customer orders, we're able to calculate this. So of course the benefit is that uh, it, it's going to compile uh, this information automatically uh, without the, the requirement of having to do any manual calculations for your uh, quotes. So here, what we'll do is open uh, a quote. I'll go to the items menu and we're to import once again a 3D steel model. Here, I'll go ahead and select a few assemblies. And we'll define here uh, the uh, the final uh, coding. So of course, in advanced steel, uh, there can be a, a no coding applied or uh, you can uh, set uh, set everything uh, to galvanized. Uh, but here, what you'd want to do is select the specific paint uh, skew. Uh, if something is galvanized, again, you would just uh, suggest that the final coating is galvanized. But if there is a specific plate of, of paint applied in advanced steel, you'd want to mimic the same paint. Now, if we go to pricing requirement analysis, here we'll see that galvanization and paint will be displayed as uh, accessories. OK, so uh, within an assembly that's just galvanized, you'll just see it under the. Um, under the item under <clears throat> under the accessories tab, excuse me, but paint will actually be displayed underneath like so. And you'll see uh, the cost attributed just uh, for the paint.
Now, of course, this would be dependent on uh, the paint SKU utilized or the item code uh, utilized. So here I'll just go uh, to the uh, paint item code. And here we have to be mindful that under the uh, uh, the item, you'd want to have these parameters for kept in stock. No uh, supplier type supplier. And uh, here under the. Um, excuse me, under the units, you'd want everything to be set to uh, square foot or everything to be uniform. Now here I'll search for the galvanized item code. And here, once again, you want the item nature to be set to accessory. This, this applies for both paint and galvan, uh, galvanization, just to be clear. And then under the uh, units, you'd want everything to be set to pound. The price, of course, you're gonna adjust according to your uh, supplier's price. Now, if we take a look at the manufacturing sequences, here we'll see uh, that in our manufacturing sequences for steel connection parts and steel connection plates, this is the features that group together uh, raw material items and operations. We've added the additional components for galvanization and paint. So now once our import mechanism reads that there's a coating uh, applied, uh, and when you're, we're using those SKUs for paint or galv, uh, it'll then compile uh, the additional cost. If no coding is applied in advanced steel, it will not execute the function. And in addition, uh, another uh, new feature that we're highlighting here is that you are able to now group together items for your proposals. Meaning if you, uh, for, for, for your quotes, if you would like to pr just present one phase of project and have a, a, a total a, a total price compiled, uh, as opposed to showing each individual assembly and part component or line item uh, within uh, within advanced workshop in your proposal, we, you can now use the grouping feature to consolidate everything and then write out your own description and uh, item code for said item. So here we're applying uh, a grouping for the finishings and here another uh, grouping for the main structure, which would then uh, uh, group together all the assemblies in main structure and then the finishings, of course, under finishings. Now here I'm just going to give an example of creating the quotes. Here we could set, select our specific report template. And here, of course, the description can be longer and uh, the cell can be <laughs> larger, to be clear. Uh, but here we can see now the item code is main structure and uh, the other item code is finishing and the description was, was used there. Next, we'll take a look at uh, grouping multiple fabrication orders to a single supplier order. So the purpose of this feature is uh, is simple. It's to enable advanced workshop steel users to uh, not only group one fabrication order at a time to a supplier order. Now, once the nesting has been done on multiple fabrication orders, you can choose to uh, separate your supplier orders per project, or if you will, compile multiple uh, nests from different fabrication orders into one single supplier order. And the benefit ultimately is to uh, save time and, and of course uh, not uh, bombard your suppliers with many different uh, uh, supplier orders in short. Now here we're gonna go over to the manufacturing production planning menu. Uh, where I've already nested uh, the uh, the items within uh, the two fabrication orders below. Now here we're to go to supplier order. We're to go to the items. And now after clicking on restart, when selecting on a fabrication launch, we will now see a new menu, a new dialog appear where you can select uh, uh, start and end dates for specific fabrication orders, but all will be displayed within the filter selected. And now you can pick and choose which fabrication order uh, you would like to consolidate within this one supplier order.
once they click on OK. Here now it's going to show uh, it's going to show me all items within each fabrication order. <clears throat> Excuse me. And now I can choose to select the entirety of the order if I wish or individual components. For example, if there was hardware that I would be ordering from another supplier uh, and the raw material items from uh, this supplier, I can pick and choose which one would be consolidated within the fabrication uh, or supplier order. Excuse me. Now we'll look at uh, the uh, direct item NC link feature. So uh, this this feature, uh, this new feature for 2025 will now allow you to attach an NC file or a DSTV file directly to an item code, which then enables you to uh, do many things. So for example, if you manage uh, uh, some stock items or you have standard part components, I'll use a clip angle, for example, if you have stam sta standard uh, clip angle connections that you produce uh, at a high frequency, perhaps you keep stock of clip angles and whenever there's downtime in your workshop, you decide to produce uh, a run of these clip angles to have them uh, on standby for your next project. What you'll now be able to do is create item codes for the standard part components and directly link the, uh, the NC file uh, for that standard part item to the item code, which will then enable you to uh, la uh, launch stock orders without the need to import data from solutions like Autodesk Advanced Steel uh, every single time you wanted to uh, replenish stock. So the benefit in short is to be able to manage your, your stock levels of standard part components with ease. So in the example, we're going to be uh, ordering uh, for stock. So we're going to be using the order for stock menu. And once again, we're going to be using the clip angle as the example here. Once the order is created, before actually uh, linking the items, we're going to take the time to explain how the item codes need to be structured. So here I have three uh, item codes available. I have one for the uh, standard part item, uh, one item code for the raw material item, the full bar length, and I have another item code that has the manufacturing sequence for stock ordering. Now, here we're to see that uh, this is the standard part item. So it's a steel range item, but the, the, the key difference here is that under technical notes, now we have where we can apply uh, the working file, which is the NC or DSTB file. Here in this next item code, we're to see this is the raw material item, which is going to be the full uh, section length. And here we'll see once again that there's no manufacturing sequence applied. Really the key here to this new feature is that we have another item code with a manufacturing sequence. So here we're just going to go over to the others tab to see that there is a manufacturing sequence applied. And uh, this one is specific again for uh, ordering for stock. And now what this is going to enable you to do in the, um, in the ordering for stock menu is group items together, so raw material items and the uh, standard part items that contain the NC files. So for here now, what, I, what I'm going to do here is then select the uh, item code that has the manufacturing sequence embedded into it, which will now enable me to group multiple items together once I click on process root calculation of item. So here we're going to search for the item with the manufacturing sequence. We're going to select that this is the uh, this is an accessory accessory that's going to be uh, created. So these are the uh, individual clip angles. So these are going to be created off of the raw material item, the full bar length. And now I'm going to go ahead and select uh, the uh, the full length uh, item code. So here I'm going to specify that it's an accessory once again. And I'm going to leave it as, a, as the item to be consumed. Now here we'll see the uh, quantity of the clip angles is still at 20, uh, but we've applied a quantity of 15. So once the order is actually created, uh, we will then uh, see the quantity change to 35. Now here we can uh, create a fabrication order. 
but it's actually going to be appearing in uh, launch on uh, cu the customer order menu for, for the status. You're going to see it here in, in your manufacturing production planning menu. But the key, key thing here is that you're going to need to change your order type from customer order to a stock order. And here we're to select uh, the job site, uh, the appropriate job site file, of course. So now we're to select that it's a stock order file, and now we'll see it displayed here. In order to validate and suggest that the stock order has been completed, here uh, uh, with, within this menu launching on customer order, you're then going to be able to see the restock item. From here, you can then manually check that everything is up to date and OK on the quantity. So here I'm just going to manually update and suggest that this order is now complete. We'll see that it is balanced. The status has changed. And now we'll see that the, uh, that the uh, stock once uh, updating is going to be 35 as opposed to 20. So these were just a few uh, items of what is new in Advanced Workshop Steel uh, 2025. And if you'd like to learn more, you can visit our website uh, and you can also request a discovery call with your local Gray Tech representative. And of course, to learn all the new features of uh, what's new in Advanced Workshop 2025, uh, you can download our uh, What's New Guide for 2025 on our website. Thank you very much for joining this webinar.